We have a new compressor to play with, the Airchild 660 from J Rocket, and it sounds like this. Now you're probably thinking that sounds just like clean guitar, Andy. And it is, but it's also being compressed by the Airchild 660. And that's the thing about compressors, they can be difficult to demonstrate the difference in tone, but not so much with this one, because it's got a really strong EQ in it, and it grunts and growls, just like the Fairchild 660 that it's based on. In this review video, I'm gonna go over what makes the Airchild 660 different to other compressor pedals out there. I'll also dive a little bit into what compressors are and how you can use them. And then we can talk about who this pedal is for and whether you should buy it or not. Before I go any further, J Rocket gave me this pedal to review and they are paying for my time. They have not asked me to say anything. I can say and do whatever I want. This might look familiar because as I mentioned, this is based on the Fairchild 660 studio compressor. And if you've ever heard a Beatles song from the album Revolver or Sgt. Pepper, then you've definitely heard the effect of the Fairchild 660 on recordings because they used it on vocals, they used it on bass, they used it on crushing Ringo's drums, and now we can use it on guitar. There are obviously several big differences between this pedal recreation and the original Fairchild. First difference is that the Fairchild 660 is a tube compressor and this Airchild 660 has no tubes, it's just a sonic recreation. The second is that there is a difference in the knobs. We have one that the original doesn't and the original has knobs that we don't. And the third thing is that um, this one costs around $260 and the Fairchild 660, I saw them for, I think, $30,000. So there's a huge difference in price. Right, let's talk about the knobs and what they do and how to use the pedal. And I'm gonna go for this from a guitar player's point of view. So if you're a studio engineer watching this, the order in which I do the knobs might be a bit topsy-turvy. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is the blend. All the way to the left gives us all dry signal. All the way to the right gives us all wet signal. And then in the middle gives us 50-50, which means we can do parallel compression, giving us more control over the tone of your guitar. Then we have the threshold, which means how much compression you are using. So all the way to the left is no compression. All the way to the right is maximum compression. And because this is a recreation of a tube compressor, maximum compression is not just going to be compression. It's also when you hear the voice and the characteristics of that style of circuit. It can actually get quite gainy and a little bit sort of growly, like the original Fairchild. Right, with the threshold, this interacts nicely with the level up here, which is kind of like a master volume, but very, very, very intuitive with this knob. So as you're tweaking this, you're gonna have to tweak this as well, and I'll show you that in a moment. But a big surprise from this compressor pedal is the EQ knob, or tone knob, as is written here, but it's a tilt EQ, meaning that as you turn it to the left, you're increasing the amount of bass and reducing the amount of highs. And as you turn it to the right, you're reducing the amount of bass and increasing the amount of highs. Before I do some more sound samples, let's talk quickly about what compression is. Now, there are literally hundreds of videos on YouTube talking about that, and they can do a far better job because they'll take 15 or 20 minutes to do so. And I just wanna go just into the shallow end of compression. And what compression is, is making the quiet stuff louder and the loud stuff quieter. So that dynamic between the loudest point and the softest point of your sound is smaller. I like to think of a compressor as the daddy of my board, or like an angry parent that's asking the kids to be not too loud, but not too quiet, because when things are too quiet, naughty stuff is happening, and too loud, things are manic and they can hurt your ears. So let's keep it in between these two points of volume. Maybe that makes no sense to you, but it makes perfect sense to me, because also, the compressor, the daddy, doesn't seem to be doing much, but if you turn it off, you suddenly miss it, him, when it's not there. If you haven't got kids, maybe you've got pets, or maybe you remember being a kid yourself. I've gone far too far into this analogy. Let's hear what the pedal sounds like.
Now I've had this pedal for a few weeks because I brought it back from Nam, and I've had it in videos as well, but you weren't allowed to see it because it hasn't been released yet. But now it is released because this is the release video. Um, I particularly like it on my Telecaster when I'm doing something a bit more country, which is not my forte, but I'll, I'll try and show you what I mean and how this uh, brings my already great sounding telly, there it is, to life. So telly time, and I've set the compressor up to be a little bit darker than just neutral EQ, and also 50-50 on the wet and dry setting. Uh, EQ is not that strong, but I have had to balance it with this output. <laughs> Now this is the part where I expect some of you to groan and moan at me in the comments section because even though I enjoy the sound of the Airchild 660 in the rig rather than out of the rig, a lot of that has to do with the feel, not just the sound, which is hard to translate and demonstrate in a video because it's, it changes the way I play. And what I, can, what, what I mean is that without the compressor on, um, I feel like I'm backing off the playing a little bit. And then with it on. It's catching those big pachangs and making them more pleasant to the ear. So I'm enjoying the sound because I'm enjoying the feel. I hope that makes sense. If you use compressors, you probably know what that means. If you don't use compressors or you've never used something like this, then that might be hard for me to get to you, but I'm trying, I'm trying my best. I use a compressor pedal to control and slightly augment my tone rather than to drastically change it, as you would with say a fuzz pedal or a high gain distortion pedal. But the EQ tone on this Airchild 660 means that I can tame this guitar. This is the Nomad Junior from Lovelette Guitars, and you can probably see the gold foil pickup and the half telly bridge and the lack of tone knob. That's just the master volume. And I love the sound of this thing for doing jangly sort of indie 60s stuff, but if you're trying to use it for anything else, it's far too bright. And if I turn the compressor off, you can hear how bright this is. <laughs> There's a lot of top end going on around that area. So I can use the Airchild 660 to back off with, the, with this EQ and then compress it a little bit more, again to control, but definitely make it darker. So with the compressor. <laughs> Without, be warned, this is gonna be tinny and trill. Yeah, so I could compensate with the amp, but I prefer the sound of the amp like that and the pedal like that and the guitar like that. And it's all about just, just knocking it in between these two little limits and saying, that's too much, bring it back a little bit. And that's the beauty of compression. And generally any compressor will do that, but this one, the Airchild 660, is doing it uh, particularly strongly with that EQ. And I love how dark you can make guitars just with the EQ. And it's a, a musical EQ. It totally changes the sound of the guitar, but still makes it sound like a guitar. It's not like you've turned the tone off on the pickup. It kind of makes this sound like it has a neck pickup, which I really enjoy. So if you have a single pickup guitar, definitely try out the Airchild 660 with that EQ in it and see what you, if in fact, if you've only got a neck pickup, you could you know turn the EQ the other way and see if you get more bridge sounds out of it. If you do, let me know. Now, because we have a blend knob on this, it means I can whack the compression right the way up, but put this more towards the dry area. So that would be 50-50. And now we're sort of 75% dry, 25% wet. And with the Strat, I can play something sort of laid back and it's gonna fill out that neck pickup a little bit.
So that's big and full and warm and level. And then without the compressor, it's it's just it's just not as good. just nice to have on all the time and have just that either have a little bit of control or have a lot of control over how much kick you're giving the amp and I particularly like it with maximum compression and just you know sort of dialing in just a touch or it could be a bit too much but the point is you've got all that and I haven't even touched the tone knob which is going to make that super dark <laughs> Or super bright. Yeah, again, back to that tilt EQ. It's so powerful. Right, um, I'm going to do something with a uh, Les Paul style guitar because compression for me was first brought to um, brought as a subject in my guitar arsenal when I heard a covers band play some Gary Moore, and the guitar player had this sustain. And I couldn't figure out how he was getting it. I'd never used a compression pedal at that point. And of course, it was a compressor. I asked him afterwards, how are you getting those notes? So let's do some lead line compression, sort of Gary Moore style, or the closest I can get to his genius. For this, I've got a bit of Bad Monkey for overdrive, and we'll do it without the Air Child first. Yeah, so the sustain is there where it wasn't before, and I've brightened up the tone just a little touch with that EQ. So um, is the neck pickup. I hope you're not listening on a phone because this sounds so different to me through my speaker, and I, I really hope that you've you know dedicated some time and effort to actually listening to what this might sound like if you were in the room because it's worth it. I promise. Now to sum up the Airchild 660 for me, the money is going a little bit on the sound, but a lot on the feel and the feedback that I'm getting from the rig. It really feels like I'm playing a much louder amplifier. And when I play loud, and possibly when guitar players enjoy playing loud, it's because we get more sustain from the amp, we get more blooming, we get more feedback, and it generally feels better. With a compressor pedal, particularly this one, I'm getting that feel at much, much lower volumes. A really strong reason why I like this pedal is that EQ knob. It is so powerful, yet so subtle. And even though I'm not brave enough to put it all the way bright, because it would just pierce my ears, it's nice to know that it's there and I'm not at the maximum and wanting more. Whereas on the other side, on the bass side, I can go all the way down there and it still sounds... It doesn't sound like you've got a graphic EQ and you're notching things out. It sounds like you're just changing the sound of your guitar. So J Rocket, absolutely well done on that EQ knob. And and then the blend knob, I think for me, is the other strength of the pedal. So the fact that it compresses, great, and you've got these threshold and level knobs, brilliant. But without that EQ and without that blend, you don't have the control that you have. And I feel like I'm just lightly touching it and getting very different tones from the same guitar. For those of you that produce music, you could even use this for your drums or for your bass. And maybe I can cover that in a future video because I know that I'm going to be experimenting with it, but I wanted to keep this video guitar only. Now, I haven't found a guitar that it doesn't sound good with, although I've kept it fairly vanilla with the selection. And the reason for that is I think the people that will buy this pedal are the ones that play Les Paul Strats and Tellys and the like and want to blues it up a bit and, and get a bit more boost from your clean amp, although you could even drive a high gain amp even further. So ultimately, this is a make better pedal that I would like to have always on on my board. 
And when I'm playing live, I either lose my top E in the mix or it jumps out too much. Yeah, I heard it then. Even though a compressor pedal is not as obviously fun as something like a fuzz pedal, for example, I definitely don't want to be without a compressor on my board, and I haven't been for a long time. And I think the Airchild 660 could do a damn fine job of giving me what I need from my rig. I'll put links to more information about the Airchild 660 in the first comment of this video. And why not leave me a comment while you're down there? Let me know what you think of the pedal. Oh look, a subscribe button. Hit that and you'll get more from me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.